Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and upon a lot of requests, to my surprise, many requests, I'm hitting you with a bunch of opinions. That's right, it's a tier list, baby. Now, we've done major RPGs from 2010 to 2020 ranked, so I decided let's go back even further, baby. Every major RPG from 2000 to 2010 is being ranked here today. Now, emphasis on a particular word in that sentence major major rpg so not every little niche series and random jrpg and all that stuff is covered in this video so those of you who are going to ask me what about this game and that game and that game i tried to cover as many as i possibly could i think i did a pretty good job this should get the nostalgia flowing but it's also going to be a fun conversation and do remember one thing while i would like this to be the case my opinion does not rule all so with that Let's get to rating some of these RPGs spanning from the Game Boy Advance to the original Xbox, PS2, PSP, the Xbox 360, PS3. Lots of great games to go through today. And it begins with Alpha Protocol. <laughs> Alpha Protocol for me sits at a C. While it's a great RPG in the, in the cheesiness and its systems, there's a lot to like about Alpha Protocol. Don't get me wrong. I love Obsidian. Uh, this was back in the days where Obsidian just could not figure out how to bug stomp, and they couldn't figure out how to balance gameplay systems in a way where New Vegas relies on your skills to accurately shoot your guns, but you're still able to shoot your gun and defend yourself. While Alpha Protocol, you can shoot away, and if you're, if you're aiming like point blank in their face, it's still doing skill rolls. It gets very frustrating where some people probably got turned off by RPGs strictly thanks to this game. But there is charm there. There are great choices there. It's an espionage RPG, so there's a lot of undercover work happening. It's a very cool premise. I really like it. I'd love to see them do like a definitive edition for Alpha Protocol, but alas, they have not. Now, you may notice I have two categories here. I have respect and I have just flat out didn't play. Now, I have didn't play because I don't know anything about the game, but I went ahead and just put it in there anyway. And then I have respect where, hey, I haven't played this but I do know what this game has done. And there's a couple on this list that do factor in there. Arx Fatalis, this was a original Xbox game. It was an RPG by Arcane Studios, the developers of Dishonored. Now this one, sadly, but this is gonna change soon because I was looking up gameplay, I did not play. I don't know if it was popular enough to put itself in the respect category, but Arx Fatalis looks awesome. It's just something about it. You know, the, the sun is so strong that everyone's gone underground. It's this stealth RPG. And it also has a lot of elements, it looks like, from Morrowind, which I really appreciate. And I'd love to see Arcane go back. Maybe they're doing this with their new IP and work on this, remake it, remaster it. Or better yet, just make their own RPG. You know, because Dishonored has some choices in the story that you can do so there are rpg elements so to say there's agency over your gameplay but i'd like to see them make a true rpg now before we get into a lot of games i have played i swear plenty on this list Baldur's gate 2 is sadly not one of them but it was the beginning of bioware in many ways i respect what Baldur's gate 2 did for our industry i know i'm sure it's up there with the snas but for me i did not play them i do own the definitive edition the combo pack with neverwinter nights so I understand Bioware was very instrumental with Baldur's Gate 2 and, and their early RPGs, which led them eventually to KOTOR, but I did not play it, sadly. What I did play, however, is the Champion series. Now, some of these are going to be categorized into their own series uh, because there's just so many. Like, Mass Effect had Mass Effect 1 and 2 in this time period, but we can't talk about 3. So I'm just like, some of these will represent their own series, and I'll specify when. Champions had Champions of Norath, and it had Champions Return to Arms. These were isometric action RPGs. Funny enough, they've come up in conversations quite a bit here on the channel, and I adore these games. As someone who recently played them when I had COVID, I just, I had nothing to do. So I said, I'm going to fire up the PS2, and I'm going to play some old action RPGs. Uh, let's just say that while they are great games, they are just action RPGs at their core. So they have good loop loots, uh, or I'm sorry, loot loops. Got that backwards. Uh, they're, they're very charming in a way, but they're not amazing definitive RPGs to me. I adore them. They're some of my favorite PS2 games of all time, but nostalgia speaking here. In the terms of how they've aged, 
I mean, once again, a lot of these games on this list, I would love to see them do definitive editions with. We'll talk about Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance as well. But the Champion Series, it's pretty rare. They go for uh, about $30, $40 now, complete in box online. And um, it's because they're just out of print. Uh, so they're great games to own. I love them to death. They're fun to go back to. But, you know, the isometric RPG... Uh, at but the isometric action RPG genre has kind of been abandoned, and, and these were real, pardon the pun, champions of them. I would love to see more, but yeah, right now I would put champions, despite my love for them, at C. Chrono Trigger, you're probably wondering what's happening here. Maddie, come on, boy. This, 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 this is a game that came out in 1995. You know better than this, but the DS port, which is, for a lot of people, the definitive edition, came out in 2007 or 8. So I thought this was a great time to say that Chrono Trigger is one of the most definitive RPGs to ever release. And if you're going to play it, try out the DS version like I did. You're time traveling. There's lots of choice and consequence. You're going to see the amount of influence on plenty of RPGs out there thanks to Chrono Trigger. And it is just one. It was during a time period. I remember doing research on it. It was during a time period where Squaresoft was just popping out banger after banger after banger. Like just constantly amazing RPGs. Chrono Trigger was one of them. Highly recommend you look into this one. But yeah, first S tier of the video goes to Chrono Trigger. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, a PSP exclusive. Somehow, still in 2021, a PSP exclusive. No idea how this one is still stranded there. But Crisis Core Final Fantasy is B for me. It is a great story. I don't know if it's a top tier RPG. Uh, I like some of the, the building mechanisms in there. And Zack's story, though, is really what takes the cake for me, personally. Uh, I adore Zack. It's a really sad ending. We'll see how things go with 7 Remake, of course. But, yeah, really like Crisis Core. So, it's our first B of the video. Speaking of B, Molar Baldur's Gate, let's talk about Dark Alliance again. Uh, See, so yeah, I mentioned how I went back and played some of these games. I played Champions of Norrath, Return to Arms. I hopped into Dark Alliance. I got to say, I have more of an affinity for Dark Alliance. Um, I think it's just the universe there. I always think of the sewer level that started things off and how it kind of evolves beyond that. But at the end of the day, these came from the same studio. They were pretty much the same game with different names, Dark Alliance, Champion. So it, it, they sit in the same category together. Uh, they are also pretty hard games to get your hands on uh, because they're a little more expensive. And getting them complete in box, if you're a freak like me and you need everything complete in box, these are about $30, $40. And the sequel is even more than that. So do keep that in mind if you're looking to go back. What's cool about Dark Alliance is there is a kind of soft reboot occurring. It's not going under the Baldur's Gate name, but Dark Alliance is a game that's in development and i'm very excited for this one i cannot wait to see more but we don't know much about it at this point in time all right dark cloud is on this list and i put it here just because i know people are going to bring it up but i didn't play it and i don't know if it was like as definitive as i say a Baldur's gate is to the future of rpgs uh but still that that is no disrespect it just doesn't earn the respect category uh but yeah never played Dark Cloud, sadly, so can't say much on that one. I do have some friends who are into it, uh, but it never just looked up my alley. Now, we get into a little Bioware goodness. All right. Dragon Age Origins. Come on. You know me if you've been around for a while. Dragon Age Origins is 100% S tier. It has the origin stories, which have never been replicated properly ever since. You got your different beginnings, and they influence how the world reacts to you. The combat is an evolution of KOTOR. It's if KOTOR had good combat. So it's very fun. It's very difficult at times, but it's such a good game. It's an emotional story. The character arcs are wonderful. It introduced a lot of important characters that are now with us here in Inquisition, moving into Dragon Age 4. I mean, there is so much that really is impactful with Dragon Age Origins. And, and you just can't thank this game enough for sheerly existing. And that's not forgetting, of course, the expansion Awakening, which came out to Dragon Age Origins, adding about like 10 plus hours of gameplay and more story content. It was really a beast of its own. My favorite DLC for Origins is, and I've said this multiple times, Battle of Ostagar uh, or Return to Astagar. Blah, I can't get that right. Return to Ostagar was my favorite. I just remember the emotions I felt of that big battle and kind of returning to this major turning point in the story and seeing how it all unfolded. And you're like, man, what happened here? So 
yeah, Origins 100% is S tier. All right, let's keep going. We've got ourselves a JRPG, Eternal Sonata. Yeah, yeah, I like Eternal Sonata. Uh, you know, really kind of cool mechanic, but at its core, it is also a standard JRPG. Uh, I liked how it was built entirely around music. Uh, during that experimental time, where we saw a lot of different JRPGs coming out from this to White Knight Chronicles and tons of different ones. Uh, Eternal Sonata was probably one of the better success stories in the terms of his experiments. It's just a solid JRPG, uh, but at the end of the day, it didn't do much for me. It was enough that I said, hey, I'm going to go pick this back up and I'm happy to own it. But yeah, Eternal Sonata was one that was good. It was good enough. You know, that's the thing. None of these games on this list here I have are bad. I want to make that very clear. Like even when it's in a D area, I really don't think it's a bad game. I'm looking right now again. Oh, there's actually, there's a couple bad games, but point being is most of these are good, right? So even when we're putting in C, it's just because look at S right now. We have Chrono Trigger and we have Origins, like two of the best RPGs ever made. Uh, speaking of Fable, Fable as a series, this is where it gets a little complicated, right? Because you have Fable 1, Fable 2, and then you got Fable 3. We're not talking about like legends and all that stuff. So yeah, it is a, a little tough here. But I'm going to put Fable at A. I, I, I really love the whole hero-villain mentality this game's built off of. While RPG, decision-wise, it's quite linear. There's not much nuance and gray in your choices. I just kind of like that theme a lot and how they play off of it. Uh, it was one of the first games I experienced outside of KOTOR with real choice and consequence. And I feel like it was perfect for gamers stepping into this genre and trying to learn about those choices you can make. Fable 2 being my absolute favorite just the amount of crazy things you could do in this game and the, the customization that you had with your character and the, the choices that were available i really liked it of course one of the sore spots of fable in general has always been its combat so that's why i'm very excited for this reboot that playground games is doing but yeah for me fable i feel is so instrumental and in not only xbox and and how well they did with rpgs during this time period but also uh, it was such a unique novel idea uh, just to kind of create this, you know, be the hero of your own story or be the villain and uh, how that all played out and how it changed your character's looks and, and the armor you could access and all that stuff. So I really adore Fable. Maybe I'm a little biased on that one, but uh, I'm certainly no more biased than these next two, right? Let's keep this simple. Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, S tier. Uh, we didn't get to touch on Fallout 3 in our 2010 to 2020 tier list video we did touch on new vegas it's obvious it's it's obsidian's best work it's the best entry uh in the fallout series from an rpg standpoint just lots of replayability i personally don't care much about the conflict in new vegas i'll be honest with you i don't give a shit what happens to the hoover dam uh it's really just the the choices you have and, and that power you have over the universe that makes it into more of a playground and so that's why i love new vegas so much but plenty of other people have their own reasons i think it's just the build quality and of course the power you have as a player in it that's the best thing an rpg can do and doing it on an open world scale it really should be the template for future rpgs a lot of people use like gta you know that that broad attention to detail interactive world uh where i'm surprised new vegas doesn't serve as an example for a lot of people on how they want to make rpgs but more importantly is fallout 3 fallout 3 is s tier because of its as an rpg yeah it's not as good as new vegas uh, and it is very much linear in its choices of good and bad thanks to its karma system. So it's kind of like Fable in that way. Uh, but I got to say, Fallout 3, atmospherically, world design-wise, side location, side quest, like being able to nuke Megaton, there's nothing like that. There's just nothing like that. It's phenomenal stuff, man. And its DLC is one of the most up and down roller coasters I've ever seen in post-launch support. You got Operation Anchorage, you got Broken Steel, you got Mothership Zeta. You know, I'm going way down below for that on the roller coaster. But then you've got the likes of Point Lookout in there. It just, it's such a weird package, uh, but it's got so much personality in that game. And I, you know, it's one of the first Bethesda Game Studios games I truly experienced. So of course there's that nostalgia there, but I adore Fallout 3. And uh, we're seeing a bit of a trend here. My S tier is Bioware and Bethesda. Thank you, Chrono Trigger, for being there, right? So I don't look completely asinine. All right, Fallout Tactics did come out during this time period, and that's our first D. Fallout Tactics as an RPG, um, just to the Fallout license in general. It's not a bad game. It's just not... It's not... Well, I guess it kind of is a bad game. I don't know. I don't like it very much. And, uh, you know, the, the, the tactics squad-based gameplay just doesn't work well. And so, yeah, I'm good. 
I'm good. This game could just not exist and I wouldn't care. It's semi-canon for a reason, right? All right, Final Fantasy X, a game that it, it truly makes me feel old. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, so this game came out a while ago. And when I was doing research for this list, I thought to myself, wow, like th this came out a very long time ago. But Final Fantasy X, at first I thought about B tier, but I really do think this is A tier. I think when you look at technologically speaking, what 10 did on the PS2, it is pretty staggering. Uh, just the, the character models, the acting, like actually a story being told. I feel like it moved things forward in a lot of meaningful ways. You know, it was one of the few emotional stories you experienced by that point in time in gaming. Like it had a clear intent to move you and develop a relationship. And I think that was really important. Um, of course, you know, there's, there's like blitz ball and stuff where you're like, mm, but there's so much more to it. It's, it's bills were pretty solid. Final Fantasy X-2 is the one that introduced the job system. And that's kind of being accompanied in here. Uh, it, it's not that it would be S tier if X-2 didn't exist. I just don't like X-2 as much. It's got a banger opening, but I just didn't have as much of an, an emotional attachment to it. Uh, and I feel like X-2 almost serves to undo what 10 was all about which is kind of why i'm bothered by it so we're really focusing on 10 here uh where i just appreciate what it did with its characters you know that as final fantasy went on as a series I, I feel like when i look at it broadly there's very few moments i was very i was moved and, and 10 was one of them and i feel 10 was was very important for its time maybe it hasn't aged as well when you go back to the hd remaster you may not adore it as much uh but it it, it was very important for its time uh, now, we also have Final Fantasy IX, which came out during this time period, and I, uh, I did not play this one. Um, was not crazy about Final Fantasy IX. Uh, I've heard good things, but yeah, there's nothing more I can really add to it. Fire Emblem, however, now this is where I'm, I'm speaking broadly, right? As a, as a series, okay? I picked the one that first came out. There's been so many entries. I love Fire Emblem. S tier for sure. Phenomenal franchise. Uh, the... This is choice and consequence on a different level, right? We, usually when we talk choice and consequence, at least on this channel, it's about you're in a story moment, dialogue happens, you, you choose something, and because you chose something, there are repercussions. Whereas Fire Emblem's like this, at least until they introduced the, uh, the casual mode, they call it, uh, the hardcore difficulty was if someone dies, that's it. They are dead and it's over. And I, I always found that idea as a gameplay mechanic so intense that it would elevate battles, that you would become attached to characters. And of course, as later entries introduced, being able to team up with characters and they would develop relationships and they would have kids and then their kids would have their own stories. There is just this branching amount of character development within a wonderful tactical RPG. I adore Fire Emblem from top to bottom. I will admit I'm playing three houses now. Uh, I'm not as crazy about it i feel like the professor school system kind of gets in the way of what i really liked about this game and especially because they were clearly trying to mimic aspects of persona i feel like it was a sidestep for the series while a lot felt it was a step forward and i understand and respect that but with this time period fire emblem just mm, so good you know my favorites are the fate series birthright um i really enjoyed I also love Awakening. Awakening is my absolute favorite. Uh, it was the one that really just hooked me in and I cared so much. So yeah, Fire Emblem is just a phenomenal RPG series. Can't say enough about it. I also love Golden Sun. Golden Sun's B tier for me. Uh, this, If you want to look at any game on this list as we go through it, the one that could benefit most from a remake, remake, not remaster or re-release, a remake, Golden Sun. Not because it's bad, but just... This game would do so well nowadays. It would do so well. I, I highly recommend if you have the chance to, you, you can go back and play. It is aged pretty well. Uh, its story is great, albeit, uh, you know, a little familiar for standard JRPG fares, but its animation quality for a game of its time on the Game Boy Advance, it, it is it is mind boggling to me. I, I mean, it's it was so ahead of its time. Like kind of what I said with Final Fantasy X being very definitive for the PS2, I feel Golden Sun was that for the Game Boy Advance. It's just that, I don't know, for me, the story wasn't really tugging at me as much. Um, and so, you know, I can see definitely a lot of games were, were inspired by it, uh, but I, I just, I think this game mostly than any of them would really benefit from a remake. Icewind Dale, sadly, that is joining the respect category. Same reasoning as Baldur's Gate 2. Jade Empire. 
<sighs> I go back and forth on A and S tier. I'm going to go S tier. You know, the reason why is because this is probably Bioware's best and only successful attempt at mending and creating an action RPG while still being an RPG. We've seen them try this hybrid a lot. Inquisition, Dragon Age 2, even future Mass Effect games. I will, I'm even accompanying them, right? Or accounting for them, sorry. I think Jade Empire is the best hybrid of for, for Bioware of an action RPG that accounts for your choices and is really well written and has lots of side content while being nice and compact. Jade Empire is it. Steampunk Chinese magic universe. You got crazy choices happening. You've got really dark moments like the, the place at the, at the ship's cove. I won't, I won't spoil it, but where you have to interact with pirates. Really messed up stuff. But it has this kung fu combat and it's so fun. And there's so many different fighting styles that you can learn through quests and builds and of course leveling up your character that stuff is fantastic and i feel like as bioware moved on they continued to inch their way outside of origins which is in between of course jade empire and their next entry uh, um there's just this constant inching towards more action more action more action and i think they lost focus on their storytelling where jade empire was that real successful experiment so i think it's very important as a game realistically probably a tier but i put an s tier because i think for bioware specifically very important game Kingdom Hearts. So once again, perfect example of a series that I'm not going to put Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and all 5 million other Kingdom Hearts games that exist. Um, but, you know, as a series, Kingdom Hearts to me is uh, is a B. Uh, I, I, have, I have nostalgia for it. As I've grown up, I've kind of just attached myself really to Kingdom Hearts 2 because I feel Kingdom Hearts 1 hasn't aged well. Uh, 358 over two days has a great story. Uh, but going back to just the DS to play it, is not fun, so they just have the HD remastered cutscenes. Uh, three doesn't have enough Disney content, uh, but there's still, of course, Birth by Sleep, which is a phenomenal game, I think, and a great prequel. One of the few games that does prequels right. Uh, but I just gotta say, as a series, I don't love it as much as I did. If you asked me this like five years ago, I'd be like, S tier. <laughs> I love Kingdom Hearts, but as time has gone on, it feels like more and more that they just need to reboot this whole thing and figure out what the hell they're doing with it. Um, and so. I like it for what it did with my childhood. It, it's what introduced me to, to Final Fantasy. And then when you go back to Kingdom Hearts and you see Final Fantasy characters, you go, what? And the fact that Final Fantasy is so popular now and 3 didn't have any Final Fantasy characters, of course I know Remind or whatever they call it added that, but really disappointing, I think, as, as the series has aged. So Kingdom Hearts 2, that's why it's on this list, all right? Kingdom Hearts 2, phenomenal game. Go back and play it. Well worth it. Oh boy, need I say more? I really, I'm going to save you guys time. You watch my channel. I got 80 million videos. Why KOTOR 2 is S tier. <laughs> one, one little section of my video could not do enough. All right. So I don't know why I did this, but Legacy Goku 1 and 2 are here when I could have just picked one and then talked about the series. Uh, oh, you know why I did this? Because Legacy of Goku is horrible. The first one is horrible. Went back and replayed this a couple of years ago when I bought a Game Boy Advance. Absolutely not good. But Legacy of Goku 2 is actually pretty solid it's an action rpg on the game boy advance uh it really tracks gohan's story and as i go back into more dbz content it's more and more apparent that <laughs> that this is gohan's story and why they named it dbz kakarot is beyond me they should have named it dbz gohan because you play as gohan for like 70 percent of this story uh but yeah i feel like go legacy of goku 2 was a great sequel um you know where, where one was just frustrating you die all the time. You feel really weak. You got to gimmick the system to really beat tough bosses. Where I felt like Legacy of Goku 2 was just a great action RPG. And it really defined a lot of what a, a Game Boy Advance game is, right? Like the, 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 the pixelated art style, like 8-bit, 16-bit stuff. Uh, action RPG with simplistic button, uh, button inputs. Um, and, and then just being able to play as anyone. Just that alone encapsulates a, a, a lot of what I think is, is a Dragon Ball Game Boy Advance game. Okay, Lost Odyssey, A tier. I, like, I, I think I've sung the praises of this game since the end of last year, and allow me to remind you, if you have yet to play this, play it. The fact that this game is dormant, right? Xbox has a great RPG series here. You know, they're looking for their exclusives. Like, what do we do? Who do we buy? Right there, Phil. Right there, bro. Lost Odyssey from the creators of Final Fantasy, Except, like, imagine if Final Fantasy was this steampunk 
universe where characters were Eternals and they never died. So they've seen thousands of years of trauma, disease, conflict, the fall of mankind, the rise of mankind. And you have no idea why that's the case. Like that's the story that's being told here. And I, I just love the combat. It's got this kind of gimmicky little quick time event that works really well. And you combine that with builds and skills where you can attach to other characters and then you can level up your own skills so the Eternals can learn everything because they've just had so much experience. Where then you have mortals in your party that serve as kind of building blocks to, to, to learn skills from. There's just so many systems within Lost Odyssey. I could go on and on. It's so good. Highly recommend it. It came out in I think 2007 or 8. And when I played it on my uh, Xbox One S before the Series X even came out, I just I couldn't believe it. The game has aged so well. It could easily pass for a game that came out two years ago. Not even kidding. Superstar Staga. I'm sorry, everyone. Haven't played this. Uh, if you if you don't know anything about me, uh, Nintendo was not super instrumental in my in my uh, growing up. I, I played, for example, third-party games on my GameCube, like exclusive ones such as uh, Clash of Ninja, Naruto Clash of Ninja. That's the type of stuff I played on my Nintendo devices or a Legacy of Goku or a Golden Sun. You know, it wasn't really the, the mainstay Mario franchises, but I understand how much there is a demand for that, and we'll get this out of the way. Paper Mario. I'm sorry, I know, right? Like, it's crazy, but I, I'm a huge Fire Emblem fan, at least. We got that, right? We got at least one Nintendo mainstay. It's almost like I was built for RPGs. I I mean, I swear to God, man. Like, I, 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 everyone loves everything Mario, and I'm sitting here like, yeah, it's solid, and I'm sure I'd love these games. I respect what they did. I respect the experimentation. I know, what was it? Sticker Star? No, that was a different Super Mario or Paper Mario game. Uh, Origami King, that's what came out recently. And uh, I, I know a lot of people... Really didn't like that, and I was interested in it because I thought, ooh, Nintendo's finally doing an RPG with this series, but it, it looked pretty bad. All right, Mass Effect is a franchise. Hell yeah, S tier. Need I say more about this, right? I think KOTOR and Mass Effect, I've made so many videos on that I'm wasting your time by talking more about it. But yeah, third-person shooting franchise with saves that carry over and uh, just real memorable characters and, and huge impact. Of course, a little bit of a lackluster ending at, a, at when, it, when it all comes together but so many phenomenal memories buried in this franchise i cannot thank it enough for existing s tier for sure okay mega man battle network this was my pokemon growing up i made a video on mega man battle network if you're watching this and you want a little more maddie please go watch this because it did so horribly like it could not have done worse i worked so hard on this video it could not have done worse and I understand that because I'm like, that's eh, a niche game. Like, it's probably not going to do well, but it bombed. So if you have some time, please check this out. I love Mega Man Battle Network. Uh, but as an RPG, uh, B tier, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's got like six games throughout this 10-year period. Um, I think most of them came out within five. And that's not even accounting for spinoffs like the one on GameCube. And then there's the Star Force series on DS. So there has been a lot of Battle Network. Um, and I just got to say... If you like Mega Man, you want an action RPG or tactical RPG, sorry, uh, this is it. So you, you jack in as Mega Man into like something as simple as a stove and it's this whole like flaming world and then you'll like fight and it, it'll be this side-scrolling tactical game where you have chips that you insert and they like cover various different tile sets. So you have to like strategically maneuver like an action game while at the same time carefully picking when you're going to attack. And so you can do like optional boss fights and get super powerful chip sets. Uh, there's just a really strange progression with Battle Network, and its soundtrack is just iconic. I love it. Maybe not iconic to everyone, but iconic to me. Uh, I love it so much. Once again, a fantastic, uh, easily my Pokemon, right? Like, I love Pokemon growing up. I played Emerald, and, and that was one of my favorites. It still is my favorite of the series. Uh, but I fell out of it for a while, and it's really because of Battle Network. I thought that they were more interesting as the series went on. And it's funny because both series just failed to evolve entry after entry. Uh, they were kind of copy and paste with a couple of new mechanics. But Mega Man just spoke to me a little bit more. Morrowind S tier. Uh, this is the first time I've actually done a video like this where our S tier is bigger than anything else. But it's because all these games are so good. Um, yeah, Morrowind is uh is is one of the most definitive rpgs to ever release uh it, it saved bethesda game studios 
It defined for a lot of people the future of RPGs. It showed that they're not just supposed to be on PC between that and KOTOR, which came out in the same fucking year. Are you kidding? I could vomit right now. Imagining like me at this age back then and both these games come out. What? Dude, uh, I mean, come on. Come on. What a special year for games. Yeah, Morrowind was, was, was phenomenal. Uh, I'm not as in love with it as uh, other people are. I wish I was, uh, just I understand what it did historically speaking. I've played, you know, dozens and dozens of hours, not compared to the thousands of hours that I'm sure many of you out there have, uh, but I respect Morrowind to death. Uh, it, it's super important as a game. It's the other game on this list that I really think could benefit big time from a remake. Um, obviously Bethesda will probably never do that, but if they did that, it would be amazing. But there are mods that overhaul the systems even and make it look really good and, and make it so that you don't have to dice roll for every attack. And it's just like collision detection, typical combat, uh, something I appreciate, but that does remove some of the builds from the game. So do keep that in mind if you're looking into that, but Morrowind, super important RPG, of course. Neverwinter Nights. This is becoming the old Bioware category as time goes on. Never played it, respect it. Did a good job. You know the drill. Oblivion! Yeah, so... Hmm... I go back and forth on this one. As someone who replayed it recently, I gotta say, those dungeons haven't aged well. But, kind of in the same line as uh, Morrowind, right? Like, I'm, I'm talking about what it's done for RPGs. Uh, and I remember Oblivion playing that and just having this... Mind-blowing moment of its scope and scale. Like, there's really was nothing ever quite like this. Oblivion was so big... Even while playing it, you couldn't believe it. You're like, there's got to be a catch. The catch is, is that the dungeons were procedurally de generated and they were done by one person. So I don't blame them for doing that. But the reality is that even then, like back then, that technology was so foreign. So uh, while the terrain was usually generated procedurally, uh, seeing all the content in there and the quests that you could take on and just how you could put 300 hours in easy really really challenging to imagine that at that time period like even a couple years later with fallout 3 as much as i love it you can clear that map in like 50 to 60 hours uh and that's not including dlc by the way so oblivion for its time period really crazy impressive persona 3 and i just realized i don't have uh persona 4 here so this is going to count for three and four uh i've been waiting god. for this oh my god can i <laughs> That, that, oh my god, man. Like, I, I cannot say enough positive things about Persona. It, it is easily my favorite modern series. Uh, I, I think it has continuously gotten better and better. Uh, I started off with four golden on my Vita. I fell in love with the social elements. I thought it was such a novel concept. The idea of bonding with friends, creating relationships, and attaching gameplay buffs to them uh, made so much sense as a video game, but also delivering meaningful character arcs. And then when you combine that with the themes that each game is based off of, of course, three is life and death. Four is seeking out the truth. Uh, five is justice. So each of them has these cores and social commentary built into it. Of course, we're separating five of them in the conversation, but even three and four have these social commentaries that are still so brilliant to these days. And of course, like I said, the social elements are blended in there. And then you've got this wonderful turn-based RPG with the one more system. So you target a weakness like you would in Pokemon. You get a bonus turn. Uh, five evolved that perfectly with the baton passing, but with three and four, sadly, that didn't exist. I pray, though, that 3 gets a remake, and I feel like, based off of it, you haven't seen it yet, we have a video called The Future of Persona. I have a pretty strong feeling that we're going to see a Persona 3 remake. There's too many assets just lying around from combat animations to dancing games that makes me say, there's, there's enough on the table to justify this. All right, so Persona, can't say enough good things about it. Resonance of Fate, never played it. Gun-based JRPG, though, hello? Give it a try. Looks pretty good. Tales of Symphonia B tier. Uh, I like this game. Uh, I remember as a kid, this was the first game that ever just sold me purely on music. I remember seeing a demo for it. I think it was at GameStop or something, and I heard the battle music. And I remember now going back and listening to it within the last year and thinking, man, what was I thinking? But uh, yeah, Tales of Symphonia, great JRPG. My introduction to the Tales of franchise. Um, like many, Lloyd Irving's tale, you know how it goes. Uh, I, I think this is another game that a lot of people would love to see come back. Uh, they did a remaster, kind of re-release on the PS3, and it's just stuck there, uh, which is weird. 
Uh, I would love to see this also come back to newer consoles, especially when you have like Tales of Vesperia around. Uh, it's got to be something with the technology for the game. But yeah, Tales of Symphonia, really solid game. All right, world ends with you. This is going to be hot take. C, it's a C tier. Um, I love, love, love the themes that World Ends With You is built off of, but my god, the gameplay is atrocious. And even then, I know the gameplay is very unique. There's nothing like it. So, for those who have never played World Ends With You, uh, it's, a, it's obviously a DS game. It uses the DS to its full potential, so you've got to make use of the touch screen and the top screen. There's two bits of combat going on, um, and you've got to sometimes like blow into the microphone for certain pin abilities or s do circles or back and forth. And so there's a little bit of interaction there, uh, but to me, it just felt so chaotic. And like I was constantly playing like in a really awkward position that it, it works well and it works only as a video game. And I think its characters are so good. And I love its story. And I love the soundtrack, and you can see the Kingdom Hearts design all over it, but it's as if Kingdom Hearts made sense, but its gameplay to me just drags it down. And it got even worse with the likes of like the Switch re-release, where I'm so looking forward to Neo The World Ends With You. The reason for that is because it's going to be on PS4, so they got to use a controller scheme, and it'll just make it an action RPG like it should have been, and it'll work really well that way, as long as the story is as good as The World Ends With You, which will be hard to top, but still. A lot of love for this franchise. I know C is pretty harsh, but that combat is just... Mm. Okay. Lord of the Rings, Third Age. Respect. I bought this when I saw it, though. I looked... I saw Lord of the Rings. When I was going through all of the RPG categories, I, I, I saw Lord of the Rings, and I went, What? A Lord of the Rings RPG? And I looked it up. It is a turn-based RPG set in Middle-Earth, and I went, How? As a kid, man. Like I played... I, I played Two Towers, I, I played Return of the King, I played Conquest, I love Middle Earth games. Of course, Shadow of War, I haven't played Shadow of, uh, or I'm sorry, Shadow of Mordor I played, Shadow of War I haven't played. You know, I love Lord of the Rings. I thought to myself, how did I possibly not see this game? I cannot believe it. Uh, and it actually reminds me of a game that's not on this list, but if it were, it would absolutely be an A tier. Uh, so just keep this in mind, Mega Man X Command Mission. Mega Man RPG, uh, turn-based, much like Lord of the Rings Third Age. Kind of reminds me of that. It's so good, though. It actually has an emotional story, and it shows that as someone who... You, you've seen it in my background. You can't see it right now, but I have a Mega Man statue, like a helmet. I have the Mega Man X taking a knee and using his buster. Mega Man is such a freaking good series, and they don't use it enough, and the stories that could be told here would be great. All right, two worlds. D tier... Not very good. Uh, Two Worlds 2, underrated. Two Worlds 1, no thank you. Marvel, Ultimate Alliance. This is such a tough one to rate because this is the type of pick you make where people go, what? I think Marvel Ultimate Alliance is a B-tier RPG. Just the first one. So the second one is good. Uh, I don't love it as much. I think it's because the choices were a little more linear. Like, either you support the superheroes or you're against them. Uh, it's kind of like Captain America Civil War. They just copied the plot of Ultimate Alliance 2 and made it into a movie. And more people were like, I love Civil War. And I'm like, I like the game. You want to check it out? It came out many years ago. Uh, so, for me, Ultimate Alliance 1, honestly, probably one of my most played games of all time. I would kill to see between the PSP, PS2, 360, PS4, PC... Yes, even the PC version, which sucks. The amount of time I have played with this game. I would love to know. Because I've owned it on so many systems. I've played it so many times. I love this game, man. It's act structure. Like, the, the Marvel fan service. The choice and consequence. The character builds. Like, you can take quizzes and, and, and boost people's skills. Uh, the, the action combat is great. You know, because there was the X-Men Legends series which was great. It was from Beanox. And then they said, what if we just took that and did the whole Marvel roster? So Ultimate Alliance is such a treat. Love this game so much. Cannot recommend it enough. Available on modern systems. Please give it a look if you haven't. And if you do enjoy it, or Ultimate Alliance 2 isn't a bad game to go to either. Valkyria Chronicles. A tier. I think World War II is my favorite history in uh or i'm sorry i think world war ii is my favorite period in history and not because of like everyone else who likes to romanticize it and go wow wasn't it so great back then such a carefree world like dog there was a, a war going on during the 40s and 50s 
And you're trying to tell me it was so great back then because the music was fire? Come on, let's be real here. Uh, but historically speaking, the events and how transformative it was, I find it very interesting. And then you take that and put an anime spin on it, sold. Uh, nothing really quite like Valkyria Chronicles. I appreciate it artistically. Story-wise, it's very moving. It's combat, very much like a Fire Emblem. Permadeath is in there. Uh, Operation Darkness was also built in this vein. Operation Darkness uh, is a really underrated Xbox 360 exclusive that you should definitely check out if you have the ability to do so. A little more crunchy than these two games here, uh, but still, Valkyria Chronicles, World War II, anime, moving story, great characters, tight gameplay systems, released on modern consoles. Give it a look if you have yet to. Last game, and this one I'm kicking myself for. Haven't played it. Respect, though, to Valkyria Chronicles, or I'm sorry, Valkyrie, uh, Valkyrie Profile Lenneth. I shouldn't have put those two next to each other. So pretty much, this game is like a side-scroller at the same time as being a, a tactical RPG. And you have to amass this army and then like take it back to, I think it's Asgard, and, and fight in this war. And so there's multiple endings and ways for the story to pan out. It is on PSP. It is stuck on PSP, just like Crisis Core. It's like, what a crime, man. So, highly recommend you give this one a look. I am going to. I bought a complete box. I really want to play it sometime this year. But here it is. Every major RPG that I could find or think of mid-video, of course, like I said, with Battle Network, or um, not Battle Network, but rather uh, Command Mission. Uh, here it is, ranked. These are my thoughts, and you are entitled to your own. Do let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will be very curious to see your thoughts. And with that, we've talked for a very long time now, so I will wrap this up. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.